Hey everyone, Patrick CK here with the conclusion of my 2016 build vlog. I originally planned to have two separate videos, one where I built my new rig and the other where I benchmarked it. Unfortunately, to some bow knight amateur moves on my end, the video of the build itself ended up looking something like this. Yeah, that's much of my forehead and hairy legs on display. And no one really wants to see that for 20 minutes. Uh, if you did, I am truly sorry. I thought my uh, POV GoPro approach was going to be unique, but obviously it needs some refinement. So I'll keep working on that if you all want to see that kind of content in the future. And I'm sure you've probably seen a million other YouTubers building PCs with a higher level of, let's call it, production value. The guys over at Linus Tech Tips come to mind. Uh, they have tons of great built logs. For me though, having built computers in the past, but not enough to call myself a professional, building this rig went pretty smoothly. Here are some of my key observations. Putting the Corsair water cooler on was a breeze, with the only problem being the back plates. Because there were some pin-like connectors on the bottom of the motherboard that came right out where the back plates foam support pads were supposed to go, I had to cut one of the pads in half and then stick it on. Working in the DIY PC case was easy, with ample room for all the components, thanks to the lack of drive cages in the front. The cable access holes in the top of the basement were perfectly placed for getting the I.O. and SATA cables to their headers and ports, which complemented the plentiful room behind the motherboard for cable management. Lastly, thanks to the modular design of the PSU, I ended up using all the cables except for one PCIe 8-pin connector, which I was able to put in my drawer of many cables. So without further ado, my new rig, huh? Huh? Yeah, striking, right? Okay, yes, nothing special. But again, I wasn't really aiming for aesthetics with this build. And since the whole thing is going to be sitting behind my 42-inch Vizio TV that I use as my primary monitor, the interior lighting is kind of pointless. But I did have a cool idea for the LED lighting strips that worked out better than I thought. Bam! accent lighting for my TV. I thought this was a really nice addition to my overall setup. Uh, the LED strips are still plugged into the computer with wires routed outside to the top of the case. I then tucked the antenna underneath the bezel of my monitor slash TV so that I could use the LED light control remote without interference. With everything hooked up, it was time to see exactly what this rig could do with some benchmarks. Speaking of benchmarks, my goal was to see how much better my new rig will be compared to my old one. Of course, there's no question the new rig is much better, but I like comparing numbers. It's a big part of my day job, and it makes me feel good inside. Just for reference, my old rig had a Thermaltake Water 2.0 Water Cool Intel i5-3570 quad-core that is not hyper-threaded, running at the stock turbo boost of 3.8 GHz with 8 gigs of G-Skill Sniper Series DDR3-2133 memory on two 4 gig sticks on an ASRock Z77 Extreme 4 Edition motherboard with one EVGA Superclock GTX 660 3GB graphics card all enclosed in a Roswell Challenger case and running the latest version of Windows 10. The new rig has a Corsair H55 water-cooled Intel i7-6700K quad-core that is hyper-threaded, running at the stock turbo boost of 4.2 GHz with 16 gigs of G-Skill Ripjaw 5 Series DDR4-3000 memory on two 8 gig sticks on an ASRock Z170 Pro 4S motherboard with one MSI GTX 1070 Gaming X 8 gig graphics card, all enclosed in a DIY PC Silence BK case and also running the latest version of Windows 10. Right off the bat, my old rig is woefully outmatched in every department. Of course, that's what three years of hardware and architecture advancements gives you. Oddly enough, I spent roughly the same amount of money on my old rig as I did on my new one, around $1,000. On to the benchmarks. Looking, well actually listening to the case, the silence of Silence BK seems to have lived up to its name. At idle in my bedroom with both of the fan controllers set to medium, my sound o meter read an average of 22 decibels, which is three decibels less than the average of 25 with the side panels off, which is still a whisper 
compared to my old computer that roared at an average of 31 decibels even at idle. Something I didn't even notice until I compared the two. It's truly a world of difference. Now my old rig drives me crazy with how loud it is. I ended up leaving the fan speeds at medium with no reason to crank it higher even after hours of benchmarking. So good marks on the case and overall quiet component choices so far. To get some of the initial performance numbers I use Cinebench which is a great synthetic CPU and graphics benchmark which is also free, link to that below. We managed to average a score of 902 for the CPU and got 144 on average FPS on the GPU test. Compare that with my old rig which got an average of 484 for the CPU and 80 FPS on the GPU which is almost an 87% increase in CPU performance and exactly 80% increase in GPU performance. Here is a really cool side-by-side -side comparison of the advantage of having hyper-threaded cores. You can see the i7 has 8 threads processing the rendering compared to only 4 of the i5. Uh, which one's going to get done first? I'm taking bets now. Oh wait, it's over. i7 won. During the test, we didn't get over 60 degrees C on any core or 70 degrees on the GPU according to hardware monitor, which is another great free utility that well monitors your hardware. Link to that below. Synthetic tests are great, but I can't do much with that other than for comparison's sake. Time to see how this new rig handles my favorite games and some production work. Now let's start off with one of my favorite games, The Crew. Admittedly, this is not a AAA title, but because I play this game a lot, it's a great benchmark for me. And hands down, I was blown away compared to my old computer, where I couldn't even deviate from medium settings to keep 30 FPS. This new rig was able to rock ultra settings at 1080p and rarely deviated from the max 60 FPS that the game grudgingly makes you stay at. Again, after a couple hours of playing, we managed to stay under 65 degrees on any CPU core and under 70 degrees on the GPU. City Skylines and Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, which are CPU intensive games, ran amazingly well at max settings, averaging 60 FPS and 80 FPS respectively, even with large cities and extensive parks. Lastly, a true AAA title, Gears of War 4, which I got bundled with my graphics card. This was a very cool experience. I haven't played any of the Gears of War games before, but I was impressed at how well the game looked and played running ultra settings at 1080p. I managed an average of 140 FPS and it didn't dip too far even during heavy combat scenes. I'm not even going to try to play this game on my old rig. One, because I know it won't run it well. And two, it's an 84 gig download. So yeah, new. No. Now that we proved this rig has legs in the gaming environment, it's time to see how it can handle my production work. If you haven't figured it out yet, video production is not my forte just yet. I'm a web developer and graphic designer by trade, so I'm probably not optimizing my video creation workflow. But I noticed rendering videos takes forever. At least it did with my old computer. Scrubbing through footage is very smooth in Adobe Premiere CC or After Effects which helps to quickly figure out the right timings for effects and narrows down any visual quirks. Rendering a 10 minute 1080p video took a little under 14 minutes, which blew me away. My old system took almost half an hour to do the same task. Again, that is the benefit of having hyper-threaded cores and 16 gigs of DDR4 memory. I've got to say, I'm excited to see how much I can do with this new rig, not only in gaming, but especially now with helping me get more videos out of all the things I love to do. So stick around because more is coming for sure. This has been Patrick CK. Hope to see you all in my next video. Thanks everyone.